In an interview last year, the CEO of the missing tourist submersible with five passengers on board discussed his concerns about the journey but claimed his mission was safe in the end. As part of yesterday's $250,000 per person Titanic trip, Stockton Rush, the owner of Ocean Gate Expeditions, was among a team of five that included French adventurer P. H. Nargiolet and Hamish Harding. Yesterday's crew took out around 4 a.m., but they lost contact with the mothership an hour and 45 minutes later. Rush repeatedly said that the explorers would be secure and had the oxygen they needed to survive in a lengthy interview he gave before the end of last year, but he also did not seem to be naive of the hazards involved. You understand, there is a limit. You know, safety is eventually simply a waste of time. I mean, if you simply want to be safe, stay in bed, he said. Avoid getting in your car. Don't take any action. You will eventually take some risks. Therefore, the decision is truly a risk vs. return one. Rush told CBS News, I think I can accomplish this just as securely by breaching the regulations. He mentioned the inability to surface when asked what, if anything, he was most concerned about. The factors that will prevent me from reaching the surface are what frighten me the most, he said. Fishnets, overhangs, and entanglement dangers. And that is only a method for piloting. It should be obvious. If there is an overhang, avoid going below it. Avoid going near a net if one is there. So long as you go slowly and steadily, you can avoid those. Additionally, he discussed how straightforward the technology and design intended to transport them underwater was going to be, including utilizing a white Xbox controller to manage the procedure. He remarked, we control the entire system with this game controller. It shouldn't require a lot of skill. It should be like an elevator. He appeared to be certain that this would work out despite whatever concerns he may have had, such as the crushing weight of the water pressure. It's not particularly risky, in my opinion. There hasn't even been a serious injury, let alone a fatality, in the previous three decades of submersible operations, Rush claimed. What concerns us is not what happens after you're underwater. What concerns me is the possibility of folks who may not have the finest balance falling down and hitting their heads while I'm transporting you there and you're on the ship in freezing states with large doors that can crush your hands. I think that's the risky aspect, he continued. The sub can stay down for up to 96 hours with five people drinking oxygen, according to Ocean Gate's website. But after more than 30 hours of the rescue effort, it has yet to be located. The crew has enough air to survive underwater till 7 m EDT after launching on Sunday at 4 m but losing contact with the sub's mothership MV Polar Prince one hour and 45 minutes into the two-hour descent. Rescuers acknowledge that the sub may have been caught in the Titanic debris, which is located in USC's 370 miles from Newfoundland in Canada but is accessible by submarine just yesterday afternoon. Experts on submarines worry that the ship is too deep form and rescue subs like the U.S. Navy sub, which can only go up to 2,000 feet, and that the only viable option for getting there may be a remotely operated vehicle. These have a 20,000-foot depth limit. The Titanic submarine, called Titan, lost communication with the surface for at least seven hours while appearing to be getting closer to its target. The Polar Prince receives pings from Titan every 15 minutes, the latest of which was at around 10 a.m. Est yesterday when the submersible was floating above the Titanic ruins. Chaos started to spread at that same time. At 9 o'clock in the evening, a distress call was issued to the U.S. Coast Guard, whose Boston branch is in charge of organizing what would be the deepest underwater rescue effort ever. Rear Admiral John W. Mauger stated during a news conference on Monday that the U.S. Coast Guard is working as hard as possible to discover it while lives are at risk with only 96 hours of air remaining amongst the five crew members until Thursday. However, Veteran Coast Guardsman John Mixon told Fox News that the situation was extremely serious and dire, adding that it was difficult to determine what exactly took place when communications were lost completely in such a circumstance until the vessel was located. This is by no means a frequent event. Undoubtedly, something awful and quick happened. Customers don't need to have any prior diving experience, according to Ocean Gate's website, 
but there are a few physical requirements like being able to board small boats in active seas, it adds. OceanGate claimed it was getting support from government organizations and deep-sea businesses. A two-hour dive to the Titanic wreck and a similar dive on the way up are included in the eight-day journey. In all, it can take eight to ten hours. Officials are planning to send a remotely operated vehicle ROV that can descend to a depth of 20,000 feet to the location as soon as possible, according to David Concanon, an advisor to Ocean Gate who had originally expected to participate on the trip. In the meantime, the search in the isolated area of the ocean, 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 370 miles southeast of southernmost Newfoundland, is also being supported by CON 30s and PATES from the US and Canada. Commercial ships assisting in the rescue effort also have access to sonar buoys that can hear at a depth of 13,000 feet, according to the Coast Guard. The rescue effort, according to Admiral Mauger, was very complicated and he acknowledged that the ship may have been stranded in the Titanic's debris. He said, we're working as hard as we can and using every resource at our disposal to try and find the submersible. We were informed yesterday Sunday afternoon, and we promptly mobilized resources to check the water's surface, search from the air, and find any vessels that could be submerged as well. We conducted a thorough search to locate these individuals. We don't have equipment there that can make a scan of the bottom. There is a lot of debris at this disaster, so locating will be tough, Admiral Mauger said Fox News. If that were the case, the Coast Guard would not be able to access it. At this time, we lack the capability. We're concentrating on attempting to find it right now. In a different interview on Sky News, former Rear Admiral Chris Perry shared Mauger's worries. It is really concerning. We don't know yet but it may have been caught in the Titanic's debris, Perry added. The wreck site is out in the middle of nowhere. One can only hope that the mothership will have a backup vessel that can look into the situation right away. The MV Polar Prince was chartered by OceanGate, a company that was created in 2009, to transport the group to the dive location. The 5-inch thick carbon fiber submersible, topped on either end by a titanium dome, is said to have left St. John's, Newfoundland, on Saturday. Polar Prince is scheduled to launch at approximately 4 a.m. On Sunday, the Titan submarines are helpless to navigate themselves underwater. Instead, they rely on the mothership's text messages to tell them where to go. The missing tourist submarine is categorized as a submersible rather than a submarine since it is not an independent vessel but instead depends on a support station. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to safely dive the Titanic wreckage site is described by Ocean Gate as a 12,500-foot journey to the bottom of the sea. Wealthy visitors are advised that they may step outside of everyday life and discover something truly extraordinary provided money isn't an object and you don't mind close quarters. CEO of Action Aviation in Dubai and a multimillionaire Mr. Harding, who has been around the world, been into space, and owns three Guinness World Records, including one for spending the longest period of time at the bottom of an ocean, swore not to be someone who especially as they grow older gives up on their dreams. In a statement confirming the disappearance of its sub, OceanGate stated, We are exploring and mobilizing all options to bring the crew back safely. The crewmen aboard the submersible and their families are our only concern. The crew members' safe return is our first concern. Since the sub is so distant from its mothership, it employs Ellen Misk Starlink to connect with it. London-born Harding enthusiastically posted on social media about going there before the trip. According to Harding, a window had come up that would allow the group to dive. We are going to try a dive tomorrow because a weather window just opened up. We began steaming yesterday from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, and we expect to begin diving operations tomorrow morning about 4 a.m., he added. On Sunday around 4 a.m., his employer, Action Aviation, issued a message verifying that he was diving. One trip is still underway, and two more have been scheduled for June of next year, according to the Ocean Gate website. More than 1,500 passengers perished when the Titanic sank in the early hours of April 15, 1912, on its first journey from England to New York after colliding with an iceberg.
The wreckage, divided into two main parts, was discovered in 1985. Early in the new millennium, experts issued a warning that the amount of people visiting the wreck could be endangering it. They noted that holes had appeared in the ship's decks, walls had buckled, and rust was spreading throughout the vessel. They said that it was a cemetery and should be treated with respect.